have the honor of being joined by Professor Saskia Sassen of Columbia University. I will have the privilege of being on stage with her in just a few minutes, but we pulled her aside backstage to have a quick conversation about the theme of today's Economist uh, Intelligent Infrastructure Summit, namely smart cities. But let's take a big step back because uh, the field of global cities wouldn't really exist without you. You were really the pioneer and originator of it. So tell us, what, why now? Why is this moment really crystallized around the global city and smart city? Right. Well, I think two things come together. One of them in the Keynesian period, cities, you know, the, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, into the 70s, cities were centers for administration. They were routine. Highly regulated economies did not need enormously inventive and speculative intelligences to be employed, you know, in all major sectors. That changes with globalization. Once you go global, you have a complicated setup, and you really have, the, you know, the problem of incomplete knowledge, which is always present for firms in the market economy, becomes absolutely acute when you go global. You're dealing with 40 different accounting systems, 50 different management cultures. So you actually, the global city is a place where there's enough diversity of talents, of knowledge, of information, etc., that you can create a kind of knowledge that I call, you know, urban knowledge capital. It really is more than the sum of the creative class. <laughs> Do we need to have a metropolitan development uh, index in order to distinguish the wealth that cities accumulate versus the countries that they're in? I think you're, I think that is a very important issue. You know, people have been debating this. It's very difficult to measure. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely very difficult to measure because all the data sets are at the national level. Right. And that is the other issue, is that the national, you know, is a is a weakening condition. So if you think, you know, when, when we put all that money into banks, you know, for the rescue of the banks, the notion was, you know, we're rescuing our national financial system. No. Our national taxpayers' money used national law, used the national office of the president to rescue a global system. So in that sense, you know, the strategic space is not necessarily sort of this big nation state space. That's really the idea. Now, it is not least by virtue of your fabulous accent, but also your <laughs> academic qualifications that you hold a very esteemed position in Columbia University's Committee on Global Thought. Can you tell us, and that committee really does set the tone for intellectuals and academics around the world, so will you tell us what is on the mind of the Committee on Global Thought today? Well, I'm glad really that you asked that question because many people, first they wonder why thought? How about research? How about whatever policy? And the notion is we really start from scratch. We're academics. You know, academics have their, their own limitations, let's say. <laughs> and so we think that it, to understand what is happening today, it is not enough just to have the data, just to have the empirical side covered. We actually need to develop new categories for gathering data, for interpreting data, for understanding what the data are telling us. And so in that sense, it, the second issue is that we need multiple forms of knowledge, so we have historian, philosopher, literature, law, you know. and I love that project. You know, I really, when I developed the global city, I captured in one term the contradiction, global and city. Right. And I think that is just an indication of a whole set of such categories, you know, where we have to actually go beyond this national versus global. Wonderful. Saskia Sassen, thanks so much for joining us on Foreign Policy. Nice question.